video, I'm going to show you how we can use Excel data analysis tool pack for simple linear regression. I have another video to show you how we can use data analysis tool pack for multiple linear regression. So first of all, this is the same data set I've been using uh, in my lecture videos. That is a Butler tracking company data set with multiple variables as indicated here. For explanations of these variables, please refer to my lecture videos. I'm just going to carry out a very simple linear regression analysis here. And more specifically, we want to predict time using miles. So that means time is going to be the dependent variable. Uh, we use y to represent it. And miles here is going to be the exponential variable or independent variable. We usually use x to represent it. OK, so first of all, you have to make sure you installed and load your data analysis tool pack. If you do that, it will show up under data. I mean, Excel, I click on data. On the very top corner, you can see data analysis. I'm working with a Mac, but if you have PC, it's under the same data as well. So click on that. And we have a bunch of tools pulled up. And we're going to use regression here. So click OK. And so we have to specify our Y range and X range. As I said earlier, on, Y is the dependent variable. So that's going to be time here. So let's work on that. I'm going to click on time. And I like to press and hold shift and control and downward arrow. So I select all of them, as you can see. The next one is input X range. That's the independent variable or exponential variable. So that's going to be our miles, which is in column B. So let's do that. I'm going to delete this one and try to show you how I did it. So this one, press and hold shift and control two buttons together, downward arrow. So everything is being selected. OK, this trick is super useful, especially if you continuous data, where is no gap, like no empty cells in any of the column. If you do have empty cells, sometimes you might run into issues. So I'm going to do that. We do have labels here. Let's refer to the variable in the first row. OK, and so I like to output options in a new worksheet. So I click that. I also checked a bunch of residues because I want to show you how, how residue plots uh, play out. So please check like all of them. And I guess I will also check the normal probability plots as well. Just click OK. OK, so you can see we have a, a new worksheet being populated. So let me rename it because I have a bunch of them here. So I'm going to call this simple linear regression output. OK, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So you can see what I have here. OK, regardless which software you use, it could be Excel data analysis tool pack. It could be Excel stat as you have watched my lecture videos. That's the software we used to use. The output pretty much all come in three table format. As far as the numbers are concerned, they should be identical. Regardless which software you use, they should always be the same, especially for such a simple linear regression, simple models. If it's a multiple linear regression, they should be the same as well. OK. So the, out of those three tables, I would say the most important one is going to be the last table. The last table has both intercept estimate and also the slope estimate here. So those two numbers. OK, and so given those two numbers, we're able to write down our estimated equation. Estimated, we try to estimate, we try to predict time equals to intercept. So it is a 2.428, 2.428. I'm going to round up to three decimals. And miles has a slope coefficient, that's a 0 0.069, multiplied by miles. So that's the estimated equation here, as you can see. OK, and if you watch the lecture videos, you probably know the p-value here is super important. It's going to tell us whether this x is important, significant or not. We don't really care about the p-value for the intercept here. Let's focus on p-value for the miles. So first of all, sometimes students get confused with this number. This is not a 2.15. Remember, p-value is always a number between 0 and 1 because it represents a probability. Over here, 2.15 is multiplied by 10 raised to the power negative 44. So it is an extremely small number. So you can pretty much round it using 0. OK, so that means a very small p-value indicate Miles is a significant predictor. OK, so you should definitely keep miles in your model, right? 
So miles is important. And we can interpret the slope coefficient 0 0.0696. If the driver has to drive one mile more, it's going to take more time. And the amount of increased time is going to be 0 0.069. Hours and you can calculate in terms of seconds or minutes, depends on which one is more relevant for you. Okay, and so this is a NOVA table. Over here, we a lot of times focus on the F ratio, which comes with a p value again. So you can see it's a e negative 44. Again, it is a very tiny, you can simply replace that by zero. So that means this is a significant model, right? And there's a bunch of other statistics given here as well. So you can see there's a, a R square, about 48%. That means about 48% variation in time can be explained by the variable miles alone. And adjusted R square is more relevant when we try to compare several linear regression models. We also have a standard error here. So this standard error is RMSE. Let me write it out. RMSE. is 1.396 okay if you have watched the videos you probably know there's a relationship between rmse and the mean square of error rmse is just a square root of mse mean square of error and we actually indeed have a mean square of error which is given here ms mean square residual error so a uh, mean square of error is 1.96 so let's check if what's the square root of MSE, which is 1.949, right? I can click on this cell. So you can see it's 1.396. This is nothing but the RMSE given here. So you can see they're indeed identical. I just verified the relationship between RMSE and MSE. So that should, shouldn't be surprising to you because RMSE just stands for root root of mean square of error, right? You just take a square root of that for sure you get it. Okay, so we also have a bunch of plots here. I ask a data analysis to provide several plots and let's take a look of the plots we have. So the first of plot we have here is a residual plot. The shape of this residual plot is usually used to, to verify whether our model satisfy linear regression model assumption. You probably remember the linear regression model assumption is actually four assumptions. The acronym of it is LINE, L-I-N-E. LINE refers to linearity, I is independence, N is normality, E is equal variance. L is difficult to be checked using this residual plot. Instead, we do this scatter plot with a predicted time, which is the orange one, as you can see. I would say linearity is probably checked. I'm going to write it down here. So it's probably satisfied because it looks like a straight line. The next one is independence. And you can usually use a residual plot to be able to see that. I don't see any obvious pattern going on. So I think the independence assumption is probably checked. For more detailed explanation, I recommend you go through the lecture videos again. The next one is normality assumption. Normality assumption just says you can use empirical rule to see that. So it just says 68% of the residues, roughly speaking, lies into plus minus one, one step, one Z score. 95% of them lies nine, uh, plus minus two. And pretty much all of the residues should lie within plus minus three. I think that's pretty much satisfied here. I also asked data analysis to produce a normality probability plot, which is sometimes quite useful for this normality assumption. First of all, I want to, I want to put in this square, roughly speaking, square, squared plot here, as you can see. In reality, what we are looking for is a roughly a straight line. There's a little bit of tails here and here, but I think overall the normality assumption is moderately satisfied. So I would say it's probably also satisfied. I'm going to put a yes here. And the very last one is an equal variance. And equal variance just means the variability of the residues don't seem to spread out too much or change with respect to miles, which appears to be pretty much constant. So I would say it's also very checked. Four assumptions, line, I-L-I-N-E, all satisfied. Okay, I also ask for our residues, as you can see. There's a bunch of other numbers. We have 300 observations. So for each one of them, Excel data analysis actually predicts the time, calculated the residues as well. And so this is another table they produced, 300 of them. Okay, sometimes that can be useful. 
what I like to do next is I want to show you how we can use the estimated time equation, estimated equation that we just obtained to do some predictions. Okay, so I created some here. This is another worksheet I created earlier. So what I like to do here is I have 10 observations. I numbered them from 301 all the way to 310. And I have their corresponding miles driven by the driver. So you can see they actually the first one for 301. The driver drove 50 miles, the next one 60 miles and 70 miles, so on and so forth. Okay, what I like to do is I like to use this estimated equation, which we just obtained earlier on, to predict what's the time for each of these 10 new observations. Okay, estimated equation, I obtained the intercept and slope coefficient from this table, as you can see, which I showed you earlier on. And what I need to do is I just have to plug in the miles, their respective miles into my equation. So I will be able to get estimated predicted time or estimated time as well. So let's do that. So what I like to do is, first of all, I'm going to write down it's a predicted time. So I'm going to copy the slope intercept 2.428 plus the slope coefficient is 0 0.069 multiplied the miles. Right. So that's what I do. After doing that, I'm going to I'm going to move my cursor to the lower right corner of this green box and you will see a black cross. After I do that, I can just double click so you can see all of them being filled. Alternatively, what you can do is you could also drag them down, right? It's the same number. OK, so you can see it's pretty easy. Once you have the estimated equation, you can just simply plug them in to be able to estimate the pretty time. OK, but there's one catch here. I want you to pay attention to the range of the miles for these new observations we like to predict. So we start off with 50. It goes to 60, 70, all the way to 140. Are we able to predict for every one of those observations? That depends on the range of our data. So earlier uh, in another video, you probably already seen that I've created a scatter plot of miles versus time. And the miles, the data we have, it range pretty much from 40 miles all the way to 100. Okay, so that means we only have data between 40 and 100 miles. We don't have data outside this range. That means for our observation, 300 observations, we actually don't have any assignment where driver drove less than 40 miles or more than 100 miles. So that means we actually do not know whether the relationship outside this range is still linear or maybe still follow this straight line. We do not know. OK, so if that's the case, you have to be extra careful when you try to predict outside this range. OK, so for the data, we try to predict. OK, so for 100, I think you should be very good. You should be able to use the estimated equation. But anything more than 100, that means for those three observations, I would be very careful and I think I probably should not use the same equation like this. So you should not use the equations to predict them simply because their miles, their corresponding miles is outside the range of your data. So this is a common mistake I've seen a lot of practitioners do. They collect a bunch of data only between 40 and 100. They try to predict something outside this range. You try to predict what's going to happen for a driver who drove 200 miles. It's possible that it's going to follow this relationship, this straight line, but you never know. It may not necessarily, at least we don't have data to see that, to test that. You have to be very careful and you probably don't want to do any predictions. So I would just say no predictions based on data. Okay, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you have learned something new. Thank you very much for watching.